come once again to discuss things. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Geeky <laughs> Gentlemen. I'm Super Tooch, and me today is... Hey, what's uh, up? Geek. I'm that Matt kid. <laughs> oh, God, God that bullet! <laughs> it came in fast! <laughs> <laughs> a geek for fun is who I am. <laughs> I'm Steve, but I kind of owned myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just like it's so good to record beforehand and then just like come out with, with shit like that. Um... No, we will never do go ten black. Anyway, um, go ten black. So, so uh, we're we're here to continue holiday month, and holiday month topics get really, really weird because after like the first two years of talking about holidays, you can only get like so far with a topic. Um, so, so Alfie has has pulled the the rabbit out of the hat. Alfie, what are we talking about this time? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Uh, today we'll be talking about, well, when I pitched it, it was snow, specifically, but also slash, like, the cold, and just whether you associate with the holiday season slash the end of the year, and that's such a broad and vague rabbit to pull out of said hat, um, that you can go in many different directions, so I just want to talk about, like, generally real life as well, but also just, like, it as a mood setter, it as like a thing when you have snow levels in video games, the, the the moods you get when you see or go through snow and the feelings it elicits and how writers use snow or the cold to elicit different emotions and sometimes conflicting emotions, like all of that I think actually has got some meat to it. Conceptually, we could run out in the first 10 minutes, which is likely, but then we can just see what wacky world it takes us on another fabulous episode. So that's my pitch. Mm, nice, nice. Sounds fun. Does, does anyone have like a, a go-to like, oh yeah, I can't wait to talk about this one to, yeah. to um, kick us off? Okay, Steve, go for it. Gotham City, when it's snowing, is like the <laughs> most gorgeous fucking thing of all time. Arkham Origins is not a good game by any stretch of the imagination, but fuck if Gotham during Christmas does not look gorgeous. Agreed. I, I I am of the opinion that in Gotham it is always raining except for Christmas Day when it is snowing. And then the rest of the year it is raining. <laughs> I mentioned this in the last episode about how like emotions get more heightened during the holidays, and I just love the idea that everything about Gotham City is already so heightened and so metaphored and so like layered in weird levels of extra that when you throw snow and Christmas on top of it, it just becomes even more extra. Um, like Long Halloween, there's that great issue where it's New Year's and it's snowing, and Joker's plan to kill Holiday is drop a plane in on Empire or not Empire, but on um, Madison Square Garden, and just by sheer probability, Holiday is probably there. Mm. <laughs> and like it's just the, the level of insanity you have to be on. Like that's not Joker insane, that's Holiday Joker insane. <laughs> <laughs> He does get a certain extra kick when it comes to Christmas. He's like Ian in many ways. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, for sure. But... I mean, Joker's got... There's a lot of really good Batman holiday stories. Like, Paul Dini is not a writer I love when it comes to the Joker. Like, I, I tend to have conflicting views on his character. But goddamn, if Slay Ride is not, like, a fucking top-tier Joker story. Oh, Slay Ride <laughs> is fucking beautiful. And then, of course, um, Batman Noel is one of the best Batman comics of all time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I think, as well, what pairs nicely with Gotham particularly, but this can kind of go with just the general idea of a city in the snow, is because cities, in general, aren't beautiful unless you get to, like, a vantage point and you can look down because once you're actually in the city it's just trash everywhere and it, you, you kind of like your 
it's so overwhelming and so big for the mind that you really can't appreciate the the workmanship of like what it takes to make a city and kind of the amazing feat of human engineering that goes into going there. So when you cover everything with snow, even when you're on the ground, everything looks pretty. Like because it's like all the dirt and the grime is hidden. It's it's not gone, which I think is really good for Gotham. Is like you can never get rid of it, but just for a moment, you can pretend like you can like give yourself some hope of like okay, at the end of the day, nature's always gonna be the thing that will surpass us in the end and kind of live around. So like I think that's really really great for storytelling because you can do two tones with that you can do a batman story that a lot of christmas batman stories especially like in the animated shows always try to have the christmas special be like the hopeful one where like uh in batman the animated series like every christmas uh jim gordon and batman share like a, a coffee but like batman disappears like after the first sentence but it's like it's a tradition or dick grayson trying to get bruce to watch a wonderful life and at the end like that he actually does it it's like it's it's giving the heroes a respite and it's making them feel like rejuvenated for the next year ahead but at the same time because the snow hides everything and this is like an example in Slayer Ride and this is an example in Long Halloween you can go mega extra dark because the juxtaposition of pretty Gotham with horror is is more effective at giving you a shock than horror Gotham with horror because you're, you're used to it by that point well, and you bring up a really good point because a lot of where that aesthetic and those choices come from is old school film noir, which does a lot with how the snow contrasts to what the big city is supposed to feel like. So there's there's one movie that I really like called Christmas Holiday from like 1940, 1940-something. It's really, really old. Um, and like it's it's one of those movies that's like classic noir story, lots of flashbacks, femme fatale. Um, and the main character, well, not the main character, but like the husband of the main character at the very end of the movie gets shot and killed and dies in her arms in the, in the middle of a snowstorm. Um, and the thing about the snow kind of covering all the dirt and grime is that in something like a noir or something like Gotham City, what you kind of end up with is everything is just kind of terrible and you look at everything be kind of terrible. And the snow covering it gives you the ability to, for a moment, to deny reality and ignore the fact that things are terrible. Um, but when you do it with Batman stories and you do it with noir stories, instead sometimes they have the effect of things are terrible and now they're just really cold and terrible. And we're just going to let ourselves get buried in the snow where everything that has the potential to be changed and exposed and the truth to come out. Well, instead of doing that, we'll just let it all hide under the snow. And so like, for some reason, all of my favorite movies end with the main character dying in the snow, like Christmas Holiday <laughs> is one, In Bruges is one, Blade Runner 2049 is one. But all of those movies have that, that shared sort of theme of, like, whatever you think reality is, by the end of it, it doesn't matter because it's just going to get buried in the snow at the end. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's interesting, too, because snow is one of those things that you can have a couple different ways you can interpret using snow on screen because snow is something that it has kind of dual levels of, of symbolism because obviously it's it's very cold it covers everything but there's also a beauty to snow there's a kind of innocence and wonder to it so snow is kind of fun because you get to play with it in both a it can be this like it can be like in uh, nightmare before christmas when he gets to christmas land and he sees the snow caking everything and it's gorgeous and it's amazing he's never seen anything like it but at the same time you can also have snow be this cold desolate harsh thing so one of the things i like about snow is the the versatility uh because yes you can use it as a way to show coldness isolation things being covered but you can also use it to show uh innocence wonder things like that um and i know me personally i always grew up northern ohio uh before i before i reached college and stopped trying to be athletic i used to go skiing all the time with my dad and so, like, snow is this, like, very, very big thing that's a big deal in my life. So most of my relationship with snow is this super happy thing. And so I always enjoy seeing it uh, used that way in fiction. And you're absolutely right. It can cover things up, but it can also make things look absolutely gorgeous and make and it gives this, this you know, purity, 
quality to things. So I think the versatility of snow is really interesting in fiction. And I mean, how many like Christmas movies end with like a super optimistic, it's snowing, it's going to be yeah. like Christmas and everything's exactly. going to be okay kind of finale. Mm -hmm. I remember there's like an episode of King of the Hill that ends that way. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. it's snowing in Ireland. Like it's such a, you know, I remember shit like um, that. In Buffy season three, there's an episode called Amends that takes place during Christmas Day into Christmas or Christmas Eve into Christmas Day. Um, and it's 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 what you'd expect with a Joss Whedon episode of early Buffy where it's super sad and super depressing and Angel's being haunted by the first evil. Um, and by the end of it, he decides he's going to kill himself. Um, and so his, his choice, his idea is so he doesn't back out. He'll just go outside and wait for the sun to rise. And when the sun rise, it'll it'll kill him because he's a vampire. Um, and when they get to that point, um, when the sun's about to show up, it starts snowing. And... <laughs> Like, it's, it's really fun because during the whole episode, they're talking about how there's a heat wave, there's, like, random cutaway shots, like, news anchors talking about it's going to be, like, 110 degrees and shit. Um, like, the whole episode talks about how hot it is in California. And, like, the last two minutes, it starts snowing so Angel can't kill himself. And they just, him and Buffy just, like, walk around the town while it's snowing and everything's okay. Aww. <laughs> it's just so fucking cute. I love that episode. <laughs> See, I don't know. Snow was that an interesting thing to me because I just like the, um... It's interesting on a story level, but I think I just kind of get lost in the aesthetic of it that I don't even... Like, it, I think it's really effective because I tend not to think about the theming that's done with it. I tend to just kind of take it in and accept it, I guess. I tend not to, to dwell on it or try to see it as, as metaphorical. I just... It, it kind of transcends that for me, and I kind of just take it um, without without question. I guess I never really thought about it because, like, now I'm trying to think of of places where snows appeared in in story, and if it has meaning. And I'm like, oh god, I hate to do it. Here it goes. Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Boo! I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm glad we've gotten to that point where we don't even argue about the movie anymore. Steve just leaves. Yeah. <laughs> no, because I, I don't know. It's like, that's interesting because like the last big fight of that movie is in the snow. And, you know, obviously winter's like a whole, a whole like, um, what's the word I want? It's like this big shocking moment the first time you see snow in that movie because... You, you, it's like the most effective I've ever seen time has passed used in a film um, so I really like that um, mm -hmm. I don't know just it's 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 interesting so I'm trying to think of like moments where snow comes up in a movie and I'm trying to think what significance it might have and I'm just I don't know I'm drawing a bit of a blank I guess I forgot that it snowed in Dark Knight Rises. I haven't yeah, seen that actually. Movie forever. <laughs> I for, but now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, no, because there's like a, because the, like, the Gotham River is like frozen and that's like a thing. So I guess mm -hmm. that's right. I guess that's correct. I just totally forgot. Yeah, I mean, fucking nothing. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm, uh, I, like, Nightmare Before Christmas was like the, the one that I thought of off the top of my head. Um, but it, it seems like it's it's so ubiquitous that you almost don't that you're right you don't even you almost don't even think about it i mean there's just so many movies and tv shows and and uh and things where um snow is just kind of there and it's it's i mean even like there's like you mentioned earlier you you said like games that have snow in them like there's snow levels in games and and very few of them really take advantage of it in any meaningful way usually snow is just set dressing or becomes like an obstacle to overcome so it's certainly not always used in a thematic narrative way sometimes it's just there to uh enhance the visuals or in the case of like like i said a lot of games to give you some sort of obstacle to overcome because snow's you know that's, that's the thing about snow it looks pretty but it's also a bitch to deal with so it's <laughs> it's, it's fucking versatile shit and like i said i love snow snow is like my favorite thing in the world um so I'm I'm always excited to see snow show up in in things. I'm a fan of snow. Yeah. Well, it's funny because there's like about. such a there's such an emotional and like like deep rooted connection to snow. I was just listening to a, a story on the radio today, and like so it's it's 2020. There's a pandemic. Children are not going to school. They're you know doing e-learning mm -hmm. and stuff. 
and yet schools still have like scheduled snow days and and they're they're considering like still calling snow days because a lot of teachers are actually going to school to teach from the school um but at the same time everyone's like i mean do they have to do that or could they also just teach from home um kind of thing and so like and and funny enough the argument isn't really about like the the technical difficulties of trying to do like a a connection from a home server as opposed to a school server yada yada the the main thing people are bringing up is yeah but i really liked snow days when i was a kid and i don't want to take that from kids now <laughs> <I'm just> like, <laughs> what are the chances that comes up as the argument <laughs> there's something very pure in that um and i just i don't know i found that very very fascinating does anyone remember the uh God, it would have been early 2000s, I guess, maybe late 90s, Nickelodeon film Snow Day. Mm, no? No. I don't know. I thought uh, you were going to say Snow Dogs, but I think that's Disney or something. No, that's, yeah, that's Cuba Gooding Jr. Cuba Gooding I mean, Jr., yes. Okay, no, I haven't seen Snow Day, though. Snow Day is a, a fucking classic. I was considering picking it, but I just I, it slipped my mind. Um it's got fucking one of the guys who's not not Joe Pesci, the other guy from Home Alone, I think, and he's like the villain. And I just it's it's such a kids movie kind of move because the whole premise, yay, a snow day, and it's so much snow we might get like another day off too. That'd be awesome. And the fucking villain of the movie is this guy, and he's the fucking plow driver, and he hates children, and he just wants to get all the roads clear so that children will go to school. <laughs> 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 it's the most like kids movie thing I can possibly think of. I'm trying to think of movies that are like heavily just like about snow cuz there's a lot of movies like okay so like one of my favorite terrible horror movies um you guys know Sean Ashmore right from the X-Men okay so he was in this fucking thriller that is a favorite of mine because like i said i i i I grew up going skiing so that's a very big thing to me um he was in this movie called frozen not to be confused (laughs) with the disney (laughs) film that ripped off the name oh yeah that's that's what they did that's what happened and i'm (laughs) i'm calling that he it's this movie where like he and like two of his friends, they're like. So wait, like, fucking Iceman was in a movie called Frozen. Yes, fucking Iceman <laughs> is in a movie called Frozen from like 2010, and it's like he and his two friends who are like 20 somethings or whatever. They like go to a ski resort, and they like fucking and and this would never fucking happen by the way for people who have never gone skiing. They go to a ski resort, and they essentially like pay off the the lift the ski lift operator to like let them stay later and so he like sends them up in the ski lift and then another guy comes over he's like hey are we ready to shut down for the day and he's like oh yeah we got three more people coming down then you can shut down and then he walks off and so then three people ski down who were already at the top of the mountain but were not the the sean ashmore and, and co so he's like oh there goes my there goes the three people he that that frankie was talking about and so he shuts off the lift and so sean ashmore and his two friends get stuck on a ski lift overnight um and Mm. and, you know oh fuck it doesn't open until oh it's not gonna open until like 48 hours from now um it's just them trying to get off the ski lift at a very popular ski resort and then they get attacked by wolves which that would never fucking happen but anyways so like (laughs) the wolves how do they get the wolves like get in a ski lift like oh no no no, (laughs) like at one point at one point at one point one of the characters is like all right look if i hang off the ski lift and drop I will probably break something, but I will I will live. So I'm gonna I'm gonna drop, and I'm just gonna drag I'm just gonna fucking drag myself to like slide to the bottom, and I'll That's get help. That's a terrible idea. And so he drops. And then the and fucking the wolves. And then the wolves show up. And it's, oh. so it's so fucking good. It's oh my god, it's the worst fucking movie. It's so bad. <laughs> It sounds um, like open water, but on a yes, fucking Yes, it's, it's like open water, but on a ski lift. Yes, that's exactly it what like it is. God, I hate open water. No, open water is like the worst movie of all time. Yeah, that's exactly fucking what it is, and it's so bad. Um, but the, like, there's a whole bunch of movies that use snow as like a horror element, and I grew up with like a lot of these, like The Thing and Day After Tomorrow are like two of my fucking- Man, maybe I should have picked fucking Jack Frost, the horror movie. Yeah, as yeah, the... um, and even like, 
even like the gray with Liam Neeson where he's like fucking fighting the wolves. Um, yeah. That movie has the most disappointing ending. Oh, I know. <laughs> and then like um, fucking Narnia, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Just like so many movies where Snow is like this evil force that's almost its own that that is like a force in and of itself and and that's always really kind of cool and fun and um i'm a big fan of that in in things i don't know why it's probably because i grew up watching narnia and day after tomorrow so many times well if that's the thing that get i'm into i'll oh, go ahead Steve, Sorry, us a bit. i don't know okay, i was just gonna I... say if we, if we wanted to get into some of those more like historically used themes from movies but just also just regular literature um for snow and how, like, if you've seen The Revenant, The Revenant does this hardcore where yeah, yeah. snow basically is that sort of ever-encompassing symbol of death and purity. And so, like, the cycle of the seasons go, things are born in spring, they live in summer, they start to die in fall, and everything is dead in the winter. And so snow classically is always just this idea of, like, this all-encompassing darkness, this all-encompassing nothing. Everything is just flat and clean and death in its, like, purest most undisturbed form possible um neil gaiman's death gets at it like really really well like if you really want to personify it we're like it's dispassionate it's not messy it's just constant and you don't necessarily grieve it but you also don't necessarily look forward to it either it's just a sort of kind of pure natural death which is probably why so many movies have characters that die at the end in snow because it is kind of a way to say, regardless of the meaning of this death, there is peace to it. Mm -hmm. And I literally, I was about to say the exact same thing uh, with just a little bit more of a twinge, but I'm glad you brought up <laughs> Gaiman. Because Neil Gaiman lets me segue this into what I was thinking about. Is Neil Gaiman, with that, also um, in his book Norse Mythology, where like, he, he, he does his retellings of all the Norse myth, like, we get really into, like, the Norse myths were created, and they're probably the most cynical, depressing series of belief in human history, <laughs> because these people were in an environment where there was no good season that you could attribute to the gods. It's just always shit. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so like, so like, four wasn't used as a oh, uh, we'll, like, obviously there's, like, the success in battle and everything, but just in terms of, like, the average day living of a person, uh, you wouldn't attribute four to good health or, uh, well, for any of the Norse gods, really, like, not even the ones who are related to that, you just wouldn't do it. Um, what it was doing is, like, when you're in the dark and the cold and you've barely got a flame going and you're all huddled up, and you hear a noise outside and you don't know what it is, oh, don't worry, that's just Thor fighting a, 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 a giant. Oh, this is... The Norse myths were created as explanations to help scared people, and that's generally what you can trace back to, like, a lot of things religion, but more so with Norse because it was such a pitch black, you couldn't see anything, there was no food anywhere, like, this is just a hellscape that you need to try and live in and make it through it. So they didn't really like their gods, and all of them kind of have the endless cycle of, like, the great, the biggest winter of all, Ragnarok, is kind of the biggest information. Like, Neil Gaiman even compares it as, like, if my death from the endless was an event, it would be Ragnarok. Because Ragnarok is, despite how people portray it sometimes, it is dispassionate. It's just something that will happen and everyone knows it's going to happen, and it's happened before, and it will happen again. And Ragnarok's like a cycle. It's not just one thing that happens and it's done. It just it keeps going forever. And it is literally just winter and, and how that goes. And I find that just personally just, like, fascinating to have entire... To be so stuck in one season that you build an entire mythology based all around the cold and, and the winter. It's interesting, too, how when you talk about it in that context of, like, always being in the snow, how historically, and partly because of this topic, we've decided to narrow down that sort of, like, all-encompassing, interesting idea of death and sort of a zen-like death all the way down to just being about white Christmases. 
um, mm. which is largely Charles Dickens's fault, um, because A Christmas Carol <laughs> kind of invents a lot of the the sort of Christmas symbolism as we know it now. Um, but like that that book is primarily where a lot of people get the idea of white Christmases, things being really really cold outside, the sort of like bitter heart that people have with the cold weather and Scrooge. There's a lot of symbolism between in that book of how Scrooge's house is old and drafty and dark and things creak in versus everyone else's who celebrates Christmas, which is warm and cozy and there's fireplaces and they watch the snow, they don't feel it. Um, and it's interesting just how like we talk about snow and every time we think about snow, or at least every time I think about snow, I think about the Christmas season. Um, and we don't think about it as what it actually is, which is basically just tail end of December into February for three months at a time at most. And in some countries kind of all year round, it becomes like really, really localized to this one holiday. And for me, um, anytime it snows after Christmas, I just don't care. Yeah, no, like I was talking about this the other day. Like, does anyone else agree that Christmas comes too early into the winter season? Yes. <laughs> it's not even fucking winter most of the time. Yeah, because I mean, like, officially the first day of winter is December 21st, you know? Yeah. Um, and like Christmas, because the fucking uh, church tries to, you know, co-opt fucking holidays and shit, got put on, you know, really close to the solstice on the 25th. Um, and then, you know, you just get like the the imagery associated with the white Christmas and all that stuff is like, God, that's especially with global warming. That's getting so much rarer. <laughs> I can't remember the last Christmas where it actually snowed. It was, it's been at least four years for me to, since I've had like a, a proper white Christmas where I'm like, you know, snow, snow and not like, Oh yeah, there's some white stuff on the yard now. <laughs> mm, yeah, I agree. And I mean, you and I are not that far apart uh, in where we live in relatively so I, I, I definitely feel that. And I mean, I, when I lived in South Carolina for a couple of years, I really missed the snow like a lot because it snowed even less down there than it did uh, than it did up here in the Midwest. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it, it's always kind of like because when you're growing up and you get snow on Christmas, and you've got that that big covering of snow. It's such a magical thing. And and like, yeah, it does kind of suck that that's getting less and less common, even in the places where it would potentially uh, on average snow around that time so that's mm -hmm. kind of unfortunate and yeah there's a lot you can kind of get into about that it, snow can come become weirdly political very quickly the strategy of courting the right wing support for a green new deal because um, the planet has a war on Christmas being That's like exactly fucking right. Like, it's just like, <laughs> oh, no, Democrats have... No, fucking Republicans and their fucking lobbyists from big companies. That's the real war on Christmas. <laughs> Jesus, that's fucking... Yeah, we need to do that. Uh, someone get Pride or you on the phone. They'll make a 20-minute video oh, and just God. make assholes out of themselves. Um, so, the, the other point about um, the snow and Christmas being so tied together is... My favorite Christmas song of all time is Let It Snow, and that song has nothing to do with Christmas. But it's a Christmas song. Yeah. I mean, sure. I, let me let me introduce you to most Christmas songs, Steve. No, um, I mean, I don't know. I feel like a lot of Christmas songs actually do have something to do with Christmas. Let It Snow is just a song about it snowing. But it's, yeah. it's a song that you only hear during Christmas, and it's a song that's in a melody that's so Christmas-like that it just becomes a Christmas song, despite the snow in that song having nothing to do with the holiday. Mm, yeah, okay. feel that. Yeah. Um, also, I think Batcat number one just hit me harder because it was set during Christmas, and Silent Night is the beginning and end wrap around for that book. Oh, it's just cute as hell. Cool, cool. I haven't read Batcat yet. Um, yeah, I don't know. See, I, I think a lot about the the fact that like snow just in in life is such a an inconvenience more than anything like you guys are talking about like the big symbolism of like death and everything i'm like as someone with allergies i welcome it it's so good <laughs> um, but like that is someone with a house now and a sidewalk that wraps around two parts of my big ass fucking yard mm, um yeah not the biggest fan of snow anymore gotta be honest it's uh <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like it's one of those things where it's like when you're a kid 
especially a little kid, you love snow because snow just means you don't have to go to school and you get to hang out and like have snowball fights with your friends and build snow forts. At least that's what I did. And then as you get older, suddenly snow means your parents are like, go fucking shovel the driveway. And just the older you get, the more snow becomes just a fucking inconvenience to the point where it's just like, okay, well, there is enough snow that if I were a kid, this would be a snow day, but I'm an adult and I have a job and I have to go scrape fucking ice off my car. And so like growing up- I just up... remember the time, like this didn't happen to me, but I remember hearing a, a, one of those stories like, oh, before you got hired in kind of things. Yeah. Where the state of Indiana declared an emergency mm-hmm. where you are not allowed to be on the roads because of the, the amount of snow and ice unless it was an emergency like you're driving to the hospital or something and no one came into work except for our boss apparently and the next day he was very mad and upset with everyone (laughs) (laughs) i I do kind of feel like that sort of um loss of innocence moment a lot of people have because there there's always that moment you have growing up where like okay after this happens you realize you're not a kid anymore and there's a lot of those things throughout your life but the first time you're pissed that it snowed and something got canceled is like the real day you become an adult Mm. because i remember being in college at one point and like it was a snow day and i was just like legitimately annoyed because i had so much shit to do that day and now i couldn't do any of it because it was snowing I'm like, oh, so this is what it feels like to not be a fun person. Our school, I went to I went to Bowling Green State University in like fucking northern Ohio. And like it snows all the time in northern Ohio during the winter. So it like we got in the four years I was there, I think we maybe called off school like twice. And it was like emergencies, don't drive. But they're like, ah, most of the kids live on campus. They can just walk to class. <laughs> it's like, first of all, <laughs> fuck you, because teachers don't live on campus. But then at one point, at one point, the governor was just like, OK, real shit. Like, you cannot be outside for more than 10 to 15 minutes. Otherwise, there's a danger of like frostbite. That is how fucking cold it is. And 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 fucking Bowling Green State University was just like, eh. Uh, all right, I guess we'll have a snow day. <laughs> fuck off. It's like, so, I mean, fucking the cold and snow is 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 dangerous as shit, man. Like, it's, mm-hmm. you don't First appreciate... time it snows, everyone forgets how to drive. That's yeah, the Midwest. It, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. And, and, like, I remember when I lived in Greenville, South Carolina, it, it snowed once in the, like, the two, like, three years I, I lived there. And it, it, we maybe got like an inch of snow, like maybe. And which in Ohio, mm-hmm. an inch of snow is like, I don't fucking like what? Okay, what is that? That's that's <laughs> fucking nothing. But like, I promise you, the city of Springfield, Ohio, has more <laughs> snow mo- snow plows than the entire state of South Carolina. So one inch of snow in South Carolina basically shut down all of Greenville. Um, and so there, snow has this interesting, especially with a country as large as the United States, uh, snow has this sort of interesting, like, where you grew up, you have a very different relationship with it. You know, if you grew up in the, the northern part of the country in the Midwest, um, snow is just like a thing you have to deal with. If you grew up in, like, mm-hmm. Texas or Florida, uh, really anywhere uh, too far south, snow with like, I, I've met people who have gone, like, their whole fucking lives and have never even actually, like seeing snow with their their own eyes um and that's Mm kind of fucking and that and that's like crazy to me as someone who grew up with winter being like his favorite thing in the world well you just hear stories from people all the time like i remember a a teacher of mine was talking about how she was living down in florida and like her family's from fucking like upper michigan like basically canada um she was living down in florida for a year or two and her kids were going to school and one day there's like ice on the roads and they go out to their bus stop and are just waiting and their bus stops across the street from this lady's house and this lady like opened her window and was like kids get home it's dangerous out there's (laughs) ice (laughs) right exactly that shit kills me (laughs) it's so good 
And I remember like when there was like one inch of snow, I'm like driving and I'm just like, oh, this is a pleasant day. And the roads are like fucking deserted in South Carolina. And I'm just like, guys. And I'm just like, and like my work fucking called off. They're like, there's an inch of snow. No one, it's too dangerous. Don't come to work today. And I was like, are you, are you fucking kidding me? Like, and so I, I look at, I look at uh, Carly and I'm just like, I'm just like, hey, do you think like the mall's open? Do you want to go to the mall? Do you want to like go fucking do something? Because, <laughs> um, so I don't know. It's it's really interesting. I'm guessing that probably doesn't happen in in England. I'm guessing there's really no part of England where it just straight up fucking doesn't snow. Well, you'd be surprised because like for the last, specifically in like the lower parts of England, so, like where I am, like the 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 West Midlands, like downwards. So once you go from like Birmingham to to London to to Devon down is it really hasn't snowed for like a couple of years. Yeah. Like we we don't get much snow in England, we just get rain. <laughs> no, I mean, I think, I think that's like, I'm, I'm really curious about the longitude and latitude coordinates and I like, kind of want to plot it out to see where it is with, with Matt Fucking and I. Fucking nerd! <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, no, I mean, I think I think that's the, the global warming thing. Um, fucking xkcd or whatever that that one web comic that i never understand half their jokes um did a, a bit forever ago where they're like you know oh it's no snow in the middle of january so much for or snow in the middle of uh the of november or whatever so much for global warming and they're like yeah no see as as the, te- the climate generally warms and s- you're still gonna have instances where it's it's snowing at odd times but you're gonna see less and less snow overall and then suddenly it's gonna be like fucking upper wisconsin oh ice in january so much for global warming (laughs) (laughs) and i think there is something to that the idea that it's just like it's it's slowly you know there's maybe this isn't the most helpful thing to say for the the earth but like there's maybe a sweet spot in global warming where it's not the the worst thing ever. I guess we could sacrifice <laughs> a few species for that. <laughs> oh, that's dark. Oh, it's I know. Okay. No, it's okay. I mean, we're all gonna fucking like the the polar ice caps are gonna melt. We're all gonna fucking drown. But man, there's gonna be a, fo- a few years in there where we won't have to deal with scraping ice off of our cars. It's be great. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hype. I, I miss growing up. In New Jersey, because I felt like when I was a kid, I actually got four distinct seasons there. And yeah. maybe global warming has stopped that there now. But I remember when I moved to South Carolina and now in North Carolina, it doesn't feel like I get four seasons at all. It's usually just like blistering yeah. hot, lots of rain, and occasionally it gets cold enough to snow, but not very often. In North Carolina, it's, it's snowing every year I've been here generally, um, but just at weird times and not a lot. But in New Jersey, it was like very clearly a progression of spring to summer to fall to winter every year and it would snow every year like clockwork and i i feel like for like my first 10 or so years of remembering christmas it would snow every christmas um and ever since i moved to the south ever since i was like 14 now um i don't think i've had a white christmas at all and i kind of miss it yeah i feel like when you're a kid there's like a I feel like you delineate between the seasons more as a kid Mm -hmm. because you have like summer vacation and then you have like Christmas break or winter break or whatever and then you have like spring break and like your life is just very much like like weirdly school public school is is like very weirdly focused around the holiday like very focused around the like the four seasons so like and then as you get older and as you become an adult I know like a lot of people talk about like man like holidays and shit just like sneak up on you now and it's just like well yeah because like you you're not you're just fucking like go to work every day and and your life is not quite as separated out by these seasons so suddenly it's fucking christmas and you're just like what the fuck happened well and i think that's part of the joy of having halloween thanksgiving and christmas so back to back with each other because a majority of the year and the celebrations and the holidays kind of sneak up on people because like it all just culminates in meaningless day-to-day work um but like once you enter october space you just can't turn (laughs) off holiday mode until the end of three months that's true and it's almost like all of the holidays hit you at the exact same time the whole time 
which is not great and it's probably terrible for a lot of people's wallets and a lot of people's mental health but at least it's a kind of consolation prize for not being able to like consciously divide between the four seasons where you can get so much of them in one also fall and winter are the two best seasons anyway so it doesn't really matter if you only celebrate those agreed Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe <laughs> can you take a minute to appreciate Ian the goddamn motherfucking god Harrington doing the elitist Hmm. Of a fucking season ranking tier list. It's not that power scale. <laughs> oh man, You're fighting too much Dragon Ball. Yeah, I mean, so uh, just just to flex. Um, so I looked up the the lati- longitude and latitude of uh, Fort Wayne. I think latitude's the uh, the horizontal axis. Um, so I'm at uh, 41 degrees latitude, and then I looked up. Uh, Coventry, uh, the UK, and that's at a uh, 52 degrees latitude. So you're actually slightly further north than us. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> All things considered. Oh well, yeah, um, I saw I could look down at you more effectively. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, I don't know. I was just curious on that. I'm like, yeah, I wonder uh, where's where's the creep? Because like I remember when I went to New York, um, and I'm there. It was it was in like late April and I was like, ah, it's late April. It'll be fine. I was like sixteen, seventeen. It'll be fine. It'll be you know relatively warm and stuff. And then I get there, it's like, holy shit, it's so fucking cold right now. What the shit? It's it's the late April. What are they doing? And my mom's like, they're further north. And I'm like, this is bullshit. I thought Indiana weather's bullshit. And Indiana weather, <laughs> let me tell you, is some fucking bullshit because like it'll be. It'll be fucking, like, bright and sunny one day, and then the next day, snowing like crazy. And the next day, it'll be, like, 50 degrees, and then it's just, it's it's all over the place. But, like, Indiana, it's it's weird being in the Midwest, because I remember being in, like, high school, middle school and shit, and it's, like, 48 degrees out, and it's like, oh, good, time for shorts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I'm glad that tracks across all the Midwest, not just Ohio. <laughs> Yeah, no, man, for real. You just get fucking tired of it after a couple of months. And you're like, you know what? Fuck it. Yep. 50 <laughs> degrees is warm enough. <laughs> Absolutely. My mom had a friend who visited from Florida middle of the summer. And it's like 80 degrees out. She's like, I'm chilly. I'm going to put on a sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit gets me it's it's so weird like the the different ways that people like deal with cold that are what was that phrase climatized um mm-hmm. i don't know i just find that fascinating perhaps to to stretch for time because i'm not sure where we're on at this but i think the other thing that's really interesting about snow and the symbolism of snow and how we use it in fiction is the consequence of it which is what you just mentioned which is the way people dress and the clothes Mm. and the stuff you can do with that thematically that can be really really interesting and fun um like i i think it's actually pretty uh it's it's a nice sort of coincidence that so much of old school film noir main characters used to have like big trench coats and stuff and then when you start throwing those kinds of archetypes into a snowy day And they're all just like covered in coats and hats and stuff like that. Um, And then you start doing the general noir mystery where people start uncovering things, understanding things in the shadows, yada, yada, yada. And you start peeling the layers of the mystery away and you start peeling the layers of the character's clothes away too. And things start to get a little bit more human. Um, And there is also just that old movie trope of like, someone you don't recognize being like really really bundled up and it's when they start taking off like a hat or a jacket that things start to click for you and like the ninja turtles exactly like the ninja turtles (laughs) um but i think that's fun i also just think winter fashion is so much better than every other fucking season by miles it's because pea coats are cool yes pea coats (laughs) are cool (laughs) <laughs> but also in like fall clothes and winter clothes together are great. The fact that you can wear boots and the fact that you can wear plaid and like there's just there's so many things about winter that's great and I love it. Okay, can we all agree plaid is garbage? No, fuck you. What? Can, what? You cut out for me. Plaid is garbage. There oh. is a time. Oh a man, place. hang on. I'm wearing a plaid shirt. <laughs> I should probably. <laughs> 
I'm gonna wear one tomorrow. Civil War now. right now because plaid is actually gross as fuck. <laughs> no, I fucking love my plaid button-ups that make me look like a fucking hipster lumberjack with my beard. No, <laughs> like, hipster lumberjack. There, That's there my was shit. a time where plaid was like the fucking brawny paper towel dude, but now thanks it's like... to the early 2000s emo scene sh situation, you've got plaid and skinny jeans and boots, and yep. now mm -hmm. it is not the brawny paper towel guy. Now it's cool. Steve gets it. If you grew exactly. up and you were, if you grew cool. up and you were like a scene kid with like swooshy hair who like wore neon band t-shirts like I did, you now wear fucking red plaid shirts and <laughs> exactly. oh and wear a beard and you probably you you may have a gauged ear like you you there's a look. It, it's an yeah, there's a whole look. The black yeah. and white plaid, the black and red plaid with like yep. the the roughed up jeans and the boots on and like a denim a jacket. Like it's a thing. It's a thing. I'm it gonna, shouldn't be. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna take this in a new direction now, cause, fucking, I'm going to. I want to talk about, cause you mentioned it, and I didn't even think to talk about this, but I want to talk about it. What are some cool like fucking snow levels in video games? Cause there's a fucking bunch of them that are really fucking cool, and the best one is the snow level from Modern Warfare 2. I will. I will stand. Yes. That. that is the fucking best one, cause you fucking. Um, excuse really fucking me. Good. Yeah, dude, the fucking, the, the snow level in Modern Warfare 2, where it starts where you have to fucking, like, climb up a sheer cliff, and then you have to, like, sneak through a fucking blizzard and, like, use the blizzard for cover, and then it all fucking ends in just, like, this hardcore fucking, like, uh, chase on snowmobiles. Like, everything you could possibly want from a snow level is, like, all concentrated into, like, a mini action movie. It's, oh, like, the fucking Everything shit. I could possibly want from a snow level. It's fucking awesome, dude. And what? yet it doesn't have. What you got? Like a fucking ice cap zone, bitch. Okay, 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 okay fucking. Yeah, okay. Ice cap zone is so good. Because you start on a fucking snowboard. Okay, well, especially like in the original plan for ice cap zone, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. You kick off the. The, the flying battery, you kick off like yeah. one of the things off it and you use it as a snowboard and you go down and it's like when we started doing set pieces in Sonic now. Yeah. We start going down the fucking, uh, the ice and then you land and then you'll get in the snow and you get out and now you go through the ice and then as you go through it, you go up and then the beat kind of changes the more you go through it and when you get to the higher levels where it's above the ice and the snow, it's like it's faster and you go down, but it's like we're finally visualizing that in a way where it's outside of Sonic's mechanisms where now with the snow itself will slow you down and also ice is slippery as fuck, so sometimes going too fast is too bad. And it's just ah oh, it looked gorgeous yeah. as well. Like the palette looks yeah, really I nice. Ice cap zone is phenomenal, both OG Ice Cap Zone and when we get to revisit it in adventure. Um and it and it leans into the whole like because like I said, I grew up going skiing and that's like a big thing to me. And so like Sonic being like fucking a cool, like badass who goes snowboarding and shit. Um, so like that's that shit's fucking amazing. And I an OG ice cap zone in Sonic, uh, Sonic 3 or Sonic and Knuckles, whichever one it's in, has like some of the best music in all of Sonic. That's like top tier level song right there. I'm going to I'll see your Modern Warfare 2 um ice level and your sonic level and raise you uncharted 2 yes mm, opening and closing ice scene. level with the fucking on, train, on the fucking train and then, like, like it crashes you climb it, up yes. and start shooting the dudes oh man i fucking love that level that's fucking, yeah, that yeah. fucking train opening is pr like that is just a great opening to anything could you imagine a movie that did that that'd be yeah. insane if we're talking about iconic video game openings for a console generation, Uncharted 2's opening for PS3 is probably one of the most iconic things of that era. Because it was such oh, a yeah. jump. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It was such a drastic jump from PS2, which is like, but you look at just PS5 screen drops to PS4, it's like, yeah, you can tell it's better, but it's not. It's like, it's still, we've already just effectively got real people at this point. But from 2 to 3, it was Uncharted especially, it was fucking just, yeah. Absolutely, mm -hmm. the stated points. Uncharted 2 is still, to this day, one of my favorite video games of all time. I could go back and play that video game like every fucking day. And the fact that you open on that ice level and then you get to it again at the end, and there's just so much shit about how that train got there and you climbing up that yeah. train and the endless sea of bad guys coming with a crash train on top of a cliff. Like, there's just 
I would never want that to be in a movie just because it's so fucking intense playing it in the moment. That's like, mm-hmm. that's no, for sure. That's that's always my hot take around all of my like pretentious indie game friends because I, I I and I have a lot of them and I'm one of those people. But my hot take is always Uncharted is actually good actually. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's fucking awesome. One of my favorite snow levels, and then I'll I'll I'll, I'll let us move on. But fucking. I need to do one too still. So. Don't I'm worry. sorry. Let me finish this. Fucking Dark Souls three. This is like one of my favorite fucking subtle yes. things. Dark Souls 3 has Erythil, Erythil of the Boreal Valley. You you go through these fucking catacombs. You have to fight High Lord Wolnir, and he's a little pussy ass bitch. And then you get out of the catacombs and you just step out into this gorgeous snow covered town. And there's like the the Aurora Borealis. I mean, it is fucking gorgeous. It is like pure majesty and magic. And so you, you start working your way through Erythil of the Boreal Valley, and then when you get to the end of Erythil, you have to fight um, the the guy who, who basically runs the place, Sullivan, and he sucks. And then once you get past him, you then get to An Orlando. And An Orlando is actually a location from the first Dark Souls. And when you get there in Dark Souls 1, it's like this like magic place. It's like one of the only places in Dark Souls where you can see the sun and it just feels warm and amazing. But then when you you show up to An Orlando a second time in the third game, it's now all covered in snow and there's no light anymore because uh, uh, because the Sun Lord Gwyn has either died or has is no longer linking the fire. So now it's like fucking covered in shadow and darkness and snow and it's like this forgotten like where one time you would go there and it would be a monument to this dude's massive fucking dick now you show up there and it's just empty and forgotten and covered in snow and it's so fucking good i love it <laughs> anyway depending on the ending you get with dark souls 3 like that starts to become really really fucking depressing because you yeah. can basically do the 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 darkest ending in that franchise and just kind of take over the world as this dark emperor and you basically just blot out the sun and cover everything in an eternal snowy darkness yep i mean that's pretty much ah steve you and i need to talk about dark souls but yes (laughs) but no it's it's fucking great um and it it's such a subtle use of snow for the the beauty of irithyll and then just kind of the the forgotten cold of an orlando when you get there and so it's kind of neat because like snow is not really snow is not really an obstacle in those levels at all um but it's it it, it, it's such a mood enhancer and it can even kind of communicate meaning i would add to um to sekiro also i feel like because i don't love sekiro as a game but sekiro's got those moments where you're like on icier planes and stuff and just atmospherically it's fucking gorgeous or canehurst castle and bloodborne (laughs) sorry Anyway. Um, yeah, we're, we're done. We're, we're done with our little Dark Souls <laughs> tangent. Okay, okay. Uh, mine. Um, so, like, I don't know what it was about late 90s, early 2000s game development, but there was, like, a... It is very much like an experimental time, I think, where they're like, oh, we can do this thing. Cool, let's just... Do, let's not ask, should we do it? Let's just do it. And the one from, like, PS1... It's, it, I can think of like four games where they do this and they all do the exact same thing and that's ice physics and it's like the first time that they really started playing with it like yeah there's times with fucking Mario or Sonic and they slide a little bit but like fucking Crash Bandicoot Spyro the Dragon and one of my favorite games that I'm sure no one else here has played but Sheep Raider mm. uh, also called Sheep Dog and Wolf all have like levels where you just have to, like, slide your ass around on ice, and it is the most exaggerated ice physics you'd ever possibly conceive of. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I remember that those fondly, uh, but mine, mine is specifically Sheep Raider, because Sheep Raider was where you played as Ralph Wolf from Looney Tunes, and you were trying to steal Sam Sheepdog's sheep. Um, and you just had to do these very elaborate puzzles, but with Looney Tune physics. And then to take that and put it on really slippery PS1 era ice is insanely difficult, but like super satisfying when you finally <laughs> get it. Um, and I just like, I don't know, I just, when, you, when I think like snow levels in video games, I just get this, this very particular 
memory of like the the skating animation that the characters would do mm-hmm. like to see spyro kind of like skate and yeah. slide around on the ice and stuff is just really burned into my memory so yeah for sure that's there's a, there is a little bit of a history of video games from that era specifically where like ice levels would always be the hardest mm-hmm. and i think we've definitely gotten away from like specific environments like somehow being inherently tougher than every other environment because i remember as a kid it would be like the ice level is always your favorite but it's the hardest the underwater level is always the one that sucks the most yep. and i don't think i've ever played a video game in the last five years where that has held true anymore at all like, even my Uncharted example, like, it doesn't even really matter that it's a snow level. It's just the way it looks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. There's something about the physics of doing that, and then I think everyone just collectively got tired of it t- yeah, t- at I the guess same so. time. Well, I remember in... <laughs> and they're in, like, we're not doing this anymore. In, like, Mario Galaxy, like, instead of, like, having Mario kind of slip slide around on ice and have it be this challenge... It's actually more exhilarating because in Mario, I think it's in Mario Galaxy, it might be in Mario Odyssey, when he hits ice, instead of like slip sliding around and not able to get traction, he actually just skates and he's able to like move more fluidly almost and move more quickly. And so it's actually like kind of exhilarating. Um, So like, I think people just, yeah, people just at some point decided that this is fucking annoying and stupid. (laughs) (laughs) Like, fucking, if I had, like, fucking in Ocarina of Time having to jump across the floating ice blocks outside of Jabu Jabu or whatever the fuck his name is, that shit's so goddamn annoying. Oh, oh, mm-hmm. one, one more ice level while we're at it, but um, Majora's Mask, the snow temple. Yeah, yeah, Majora's Mask, the one. Zelda game. Yeah, I really fucking like that game. Uh, yeah, or the or the uh, the snow temple. It's not even a snow temple, but, like, the Yeti mansion in Twilight Princess is fucking hype. Oh, that's a good one. Um, yeah, no, there's a, I mean, there's a, there's a proud history of snow levels that are either fun or just obnoxious as fuck. We'll make a <laughs> top 10 list video one of these days. That should have been one of our topics. <laughs> Did you know? <laughs> it would just be this <sighs> section of the video, but for an hour long. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think we could do that. No, oh, I'd have yeah. to actually go like play some video games again. God, could you imagine? Could you mm. imagine? Could you imagine? <laughs> 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 I have to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. oh man! All right. Um, I don't know. Does anyone have anything else left they want to talk about with snow? Alfie like started like, oh, the, you know, the metaphor and the power of storytelling. I feel like we like, yeah, no, it's it's there, and then we kind of moved on from that. Yeah, but that's good though because I was just like, you can only say so much about that, right? You can't just you can't just labor on the metaphor otherwise we just well i mean we can't you could i could yeah because i'm a fucking eloquent and people would actually listen to my voice but you fuckers need to get some more pizzazz so yeah talk more about the video games that'll get the clicks <laughs> let's talk about the sjw agenda of removing snow because it's white oh, yeah my God. <laughs> oh then they don't do it to the yellow snow we fucking move <laughs> Uh... <laughs> I don't know. It's like it's just, there's, there's, there's different. Um... We talked about the aesthetics of it. We talked about like the mythology of it. We talked about the video games. We talked about the things. Um, I guess <laughs> aesthetics, that... mythology, video games. You know the big three. You know <laughs> the the Naruto, One Piece, Bleach. You know the big three. <laughs> uh, where we've got, I guess, like a, a thing I do want to ask is. When you just in general do have snow, right? Like, what is your default thing to do with it? Is it to make snowballs? Is it to make a snowman? Is it to tidy it up? Is it to just leave it? Like, what is individually your like? Oh, snow! What's and like around your property? Like, what what what's your go to move? Sit inside, make a hot cocoa. Yeah, these days, because <laughs> I don't have a fucking yard, I guess that. But when I was a kid, I would always want to go fucking build shit in the snow and then yeah. like call up my friends and be like, hey, yo, losers, we're going sledding. Because that was like, that was my thing with snow. Like snow was like my my fucking jam. We used to go sledding. My buddies and I, we would like go to a sledding. There was like a, a sledding hill nearby at the uh, the country club. They had this like huge ass hill that everyone in the neighborhood would go sledding at. And we would build 
fucking ramps in the snow and just fucking like <laughs> go off of them on our sleds. And I remember one time, um, my buddy who was also named Ian, uh, but my buddy Ian and I would, we, we brought our skis once and we just did like, we just like built some, uh, ramps on the sledding hill and just fucking like went hard and it was super fun. So like, I, I love all of the like activities you can do in the snow, uh, fucking tubing and, and, and snowball fights and, and like, sledding and skiing like that shit was all the like the most important stuff to me growing up and i i it's, it's fucking it's the best when i was a kid i was legitimately kind of obsessed with making the snow in a such a way that like it would perfectly cover everything in my yard so like i would build like a really really tight snowman if there wasn't enough snow on like a car and you could see like patches of the thing cleaning through i'd even out the snow and i just oh. liked it all to be like really flat and really perfect um and i partly wow. just because i just love like how <laughs> no way <laughs> snow covering everything looks and so like when snow doesn't land evenly i just want to make it even um and it's the same thing with snowmen where i just love the idea of like spending like your whole day outside just like rolling the perfect snowball and making the perfect snowman and getting the right carrot on his nose and finding the right twigs and shit and just making him look like he stepped out of a cartoon um yeah. And then at some point I would get, give up on that, and I would just want to sit inside and have a hot cocoa and look at it, which is kind of what I do now. Mm, mm. That's fair. The fact that Steve is like that obsessive going all the way back is is both adorable and terrifying. <laughs> 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 like if this was like a book, right? There would be an issue after the villain reveal of Steve, where it's him made with the snow and then we cut away but then we cut back and it's like he's fucking built like a murder scene with the snow yes. <laughs> it's a reveal in like the the free timelines <laughs> <laughs> oh, i gotta man. say for someone as as edgy as i am i say things like adorable and cute way too much it's okay it's okay <laughs> uh yeah i don't really have a go-to activity of snow right now because right now my go-to activity is eh, i gotta fucking clean the driveway it's <laughs> bullshit. um but i think you know having a kid i think we'll next year maybe a year after that we'll start doing more like you know fucking snowmen and snowball fights and shit can't wait to hit her in her face with <laughs> to land just like fucking like being hit by a gatling gun of snowball <laughs> dude that's like my favorite fucking joke in elf that's like the one joke that so fucking like nails it is when he's like he's just like rapid fire throwing snowballs for his fucking arm it's so good i fucking mm -hmm. love that movie ah it's so mm -hmm. good it's so good it's, it's definitely uh it's definitely a, a modern I don't, I don't even know if I can say fucking modern classic. It feels like it's it, been around forever. It's definitely a modern classic. Like, I feel like as far as like... Yeah, but it, it, feels, it is, but it just it feels like it's been around forever. Oh, but, I, mean, I know yeah. what you mean. I remember when it came out in theaters and suddenly it's like this 15-year-old movie. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just like it, everyone just accepted it into like... We're all getting Christmas old. The podcast. Of, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, especially when you look at like all the movies that came out after it, and none of them have the same sort of nostalgic standing as fucking Elf. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. It's weird. That's a that's maybe a possible topic down the line. Is like new Christmas classics. Klaus. Christmas classics that are not that are like less than ten years old. No. Yeah. Uh. All right. <laughs> I just watched the fucking Dolly Parton Christmas special on Netflix <laughs> the other day um, because my wife and I watched uh, Mulan on Disney Plus and it was the most garbage ass thing I've ever seen in my life. So we watched the fucking, what was that? This is such a bad movie. The yeah, fucking yeah. Phoenix and the superpower. She fucking goes Super Saiyan at the end. She yeah, just no, has it's... like God key and it's, it's so dumb. <laughs> It's, it's it's fucking so stupid. dumb. It's stupid. So like we man, this movie sounded pretty fucking dope. Man. <laughs> <laughs> the idiot, the idiot yeah. It's like God key. <laughs> it's like whoa, whoa, real shit, <laughs> real shit. <laughs> no, it's like fucking like. What's her power level, Steve? Could she beat Goku without prep time? <laughs> Um, so as a palate, 
as a palate cleanser, we went to Netflix and like Dolly Parton has this like Christmas at the square or some shit like that. It's like a musical movie that's all kind of filmed on one central like location. So it's almost kind of like a stage musical. Um, and it's fucking awful. <laughs> that really has nothing to do with anything, but I wanted to share it. Okay. That's fair. I understand that's wanting funny. to share your pain. Yeah. Let's um, see if you had balls, you'd pick it as a review topic. <laughs> oh my god. It would just be like... Oh my god, it's so fucking like... Like, one of the main characters is Pastor... Listen, Finn. it's Dolly Parton. I'm gonna watch it for two things and two things only, okay? <laughs> It's like they make jokes about that, but it's also like this super Jesus movie. It's like, like the main character is literally like Pastor Christian, who just exudes this fucking like youth pastor energy, and fucking you like... know who really had two great assets. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, but no, it's 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 fucking something, man. I tell you what. Hmm. All right. Uh, well, I guess that wraps it up for Snow, unless anyone has anything else they, they desperately need to get off their chest, and they're, uh, if you're Dolly Parton, that's a completely different issue. <laughs> um, what, what, whose pick would it be? It was, it was mine for Jingle Jangle, uh, before that it was, um, fucking somebody's, I don't know, I can't be expected to remember these kinds of things. I don't know. Wait, you did it's just my show. 300, right? So. Oh yeah, I I picked snow. 300 Rise of an Empire. Right. Okay, so it's it's Steve's turn for a review topic. Okay. For a oh, holiday for film. <laughs> holiday. Film. Or or yeah, you can do whatever whatever you want. Oh, sure, I can do I can do anything. Um. I can do anything. So much power. Um. Have we reviewed... What's your power level, Steve? Sending, sending it's Steve. definitely over 9,000. Fucking, fucking Christmas album. Fucking August Burns Red Christmas album. I'm sending <laughs> the waves out into the Steve sphere. Not gonna lie, I was thinking about picking um, Punk Goes Christmas. I feel like that would have been kind of oh, fun. But, shit. <laughs> um, have we ever reviewed It's a Wonderful Life? I've never no. seen It's a Wonderful Life. Okay, because if you haven't, uh, it's my favorite fucking Christmas movie. I fucking love It's a Wonderful Life. It is my holiday tradition, so I am totally down to watch that again and review it. Okay. I don't think I've ever watched It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah, it's I've, one of those movies I've never I just seen I know it. because every other thing has done it. It's like, fucking, okay, we're going to do a Groundhog Day episode. We're going to do an It's a Wonderful Life episode. <laughs> We, we will get into it, um, but I really want to talk about it in part because everything that does It's a Wonderful Life episode misses the point of It's a Wonderful Life. Awesome. Cool. Very hype. All right. Uh, well, everyone, we'll catch you next week for It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> False advertising much. Um, until then, I'm the philosopher. I'm the Christmas erotica lover. I... I'm champion of Christmas. <laughs> and I'm a generic Yu-Gi-Oh card that you can't play in the meta. Oh. No. <laughs> and we are your geeky gentlemen, and we will be discussing things. It'd be really cool to fuck in the snow. I've never gotten the chance to do that. <laughs>